Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to try to do a video about um, the tufting. I had a few questions online about it. I figured I'd do a, a little bit slower process for that. So we'll start with the box. We'll go with the cube. Probably make about five by five by five. Let's see if this works. Uh, we'll offset that to six. Maybe even four. Let's see if four works. Just want something simple to where it's not too complicated. I just want to do a, a real slower version instead of the sped up version of this. So we'll turn on active symmetry and we'll go ahead and make it on every corner, every side. That way we only have to do it a few times. We're going to go to Z modeler. to the point so really breaking it down when you look at references and stuff like that let's go ahead and outline it a little bit try to show you a little bit more in depth really what you want is to connect these points together and you'll subdivide We'll do the same whenever you come to the corner. And we'll set them at the corner. And hopefully, since this is a, a symmetry model, it'll repeat. And you're gonna get a crisscross in this, and you'll see the pattern in that. So what we want to do is go to our Z modeler. It here under Z M. What we're gonna do is open the point. So we're gonna split this point on this, and then we'll do it again. The last video, when I did it, I did undo, uh, dragging out. If your poly group doesn't change, press the Alt give you a different color group that'll help you out so we're gonna drag out from the points and make it from each corner so we'll just go from each angle do it from the top so this one goes to there and that one goes to there Since this is a basic model, it's not really going to be anything crazy. We're just going to kind of work with this. So we're going to grab these polygroups all and press them back. You could probably do it one more time. So if you press uh, dynamic, it's over here under... I usually have a hotkey, <laughs> it's right here. So dynamic, and we can up the smoothing group. You can kind of get the idea. It doesn't look like much, but like the last video, it didn't either. What I'm gonna do is pull out these center points right here. We can use the move tool and push these out a little bit. This will help give a little cushiony feel to it somebody also asked about if this process worked in other programs or showing it in like a different program you could but I feel like it would take a lot longer to do this process outside of ZBrush because of the tools that are inside of ZBrush, you get the polygroups, you get the symmetry that comes almost right out the gate. So subdivide. Now you can start to see that this cushion looks a little more softer. We'll push these out. We'll make it fluffy. And 
this was one way to do it. The other way I was doing it was to use the standard brush. Up right there, subdivide. Polygroups. So what we could do is smooth this out, but I don't really want to smooth this yet until I apply the subdivide. But for now, we'll go ahead and jump that. We'll apply this. Let's go ahead and apply it. So now we have subdivisions. We can jump up and down. And on top of that, we can smooth this out. We'll go ahead and smooth this down to give it a little bit more uh, different feeling. So let's see. Now you got it to kind of push in on there. There you go. We got a little bit of the inset. We can pull this back up just a little bit on the subdivide. We'll go to standard and we'll pull this to drag select to where when you drag, it'll actually, so for an example, if you don't understand drag select, if you were to drag this up, it's more of a label or an icon. But what I do is go and grab the alpha that has a gradient and you can actually just drag these up to give them a little more uh, fall off we'll get one with a little bit more range drop this down we can adjust this fall off a little bit more increase that a little bit so now you got the tufted look popping out on that You can make it as thick or whatever, however you need this tufting to look. But this helps out a little bit. You can smooth it back down. So once you get this kind of established, you can start to cut in with your damn standard brush. The damn standard is what I use to go from point. I'll drag it out. Hold the shift, go to the next corner, and release. And let's see, let's do that again. So we'll just go from point to point, and then you'll get your tufting kind of started in here. You could also put buttons, a generic version of buttons. So in this, we'll drag, drop, release. Now you can start to see that the tufting is starting to come together. Just connect all these points and just kind of rinse and repeat. If you're doing a couch, you'll apply this process similar to it. You'll just have to divide it up a little bit more and do uh, kind of eyeball it some more to get that going. Going to append just an object, usually a star, doesn't hurt. We'll go here, and shrink this down because we don't really need it, we just need it to append whatever we're going to put. So I'm going to put for buttons, you can use buttons. Let's see, we'll find something in here. We could try this, it's, it doesn't really matter. We're just trying to get something in there. So if you wanna make it snap, hold your control and drag out. You have a button. Usually what I'll do, uh, we'll do instead of that, we'll do a, this and we'll just do a sphere, a low poly one. We'll just drag this out, pop. Which, which you could also do is drop this down with your brush. Settings, your depth. Mine's at 100, we'll put it at zero, and we can click, control, and you have a button. You can do this for each point. Just filling it up, really. And what I could do is just turn on the symmetry. 
way we don't have to do it so many times. Just do it once, right? The center ones I might need to, well, let's see if it works. Okay. I want it to repeat, but. So now that we got that kind of established, we could actually scale those a little bit more, but for this example, I'm just trying to show you more or less the groundwork without being too, uh, too sped up. So we'll go back to this model. And the other thing is you could also remove that star if you wanted to, but that's not really too important, but we could go to that, go to solo and the star you really don't need. We'll remove it, delete it. So now you don't have a, to worry about geometry floating in your scene. So what I do typically is, is just use either damn standard and I'll kind of pull down and start making little cuts and folds. And this will actually give you a little bit more of that wrinkled feel. You don't have to use symmetry, but for this example, I'm just going to do it for uh, just for a quick example. This is going to be a short video. I just really wanted to touch base on those questions about this tempted uh, workflow. As you can see, it's not really too, it doesn't take as long as it you would think it would back before trying to do tufting it would take me forever trying to figure this out something about this technique works we could have squeezed this in a little bit more and made this a little bit more natural but when you look at it you're starting to get tufting edges cut Stuff like that damn standard works and sometimes I'll go back with the your standard brush you can reset these brushes and just kind of go back and just kind of fluff these little edges out a little bit more with the standard brush and just smooth it back out it really doesn't need much unless you just really want some extra detail and just start pushing pushing more detail back inside of there Go back in here, start pushing a little bit more folds. Every now and then I'll use a slash two brush. That'll help a few times, but it doesn't always, uh... see, I missed this one right here. I could have actually cut that down. So let's see if I can cut the damn standard. You would have a cut right here. So that you have a see I'm, I missed a few points, but you can always go back, crease it out some more. Some of those tufting chairs will have an extra little lip. You could actually cut that back in, do two lips or cuts in there, you can get that overlapping scene showing back up. It really just depends on how much work you want to put back into this. But this is just a short example. I just really wanted to kind of touch base on a few of the questions that were asked. And once again, if you don't use symmetry, this will look a lot more natural. So once I start putting on, let's see, perspective, we'll turn on a material. You can start to see how it starts to read. Start pushing in more. Smoothing it out. A little too much right there, right? So let's do another material that you can see a little bit better. So going out, just dragging, smoothing. Just a rinse and repeat process. If you do this with a chair or something, it, it'll this will help you out trying to get that natural fluffy feel but if you feel like this is too much right here you can always since you have subdivisions you can always just tap it down a little bit and just move it back and that's just working it up down working it pushing it where you want it you know if your subdivision it's a little bit easier to And pulling 
and there you go this is pretty much most of that process of that sped up video that i showed these little spears we could scale them up or fix them or do better buttons but for this example i just really wanted to show um a quick process for getting your tufted material uh hopefully this kind of answered some of those questions that were asked and people who are curious because i know the sped up video will show a lot but at the same time sometimes you you miss a little information back and forth so this is just a slow down version of that and just trying to help out those who are kind of had a few questions i know it's a little rough these little buttons i don't know if i can scale them up let's see z modeler let's just see if we can do it uh scale um let's see we'll just see if it'll do scale all Trying to get the faces. There we go. Scale all polygons. All polygons. Just see, click center, drag. Did that work? Oh, it scaled, scaled it off on the different axis. Let's see if we can do scale center. Axis center. Let's see if this works. If I can grab the face. There we go. A little bit better. center let's see if this one gets it just right there we go but you can play around with it I probably should have um, scaled them correctly the first time local symmetry so but yeah once again like hopefully this helps um, want to get more videos out it's just been a little busy lately so uh, yeah thank you for watching